Anthony was a well-known director and very influential in the entertainment industry. Should Vera enter show business, Hazel didn't know if he had the power to destroy her career before it even began. If he knew they were related, it was certainly a possibility. That was why Hazel had to find a backer for Vera. Even though she wanted to help her cousin, she was in no position to do so at that moment, and she needed to find a strong and influential person who could. With Tim's connection in show business, he was the ideal candidate. Hazel smiled as she looked at Tim and said, I'd like to ask you to watch out for my little cousin. Of course, that would mean I'll hold you accountable if anything happens to her. What Hazel knew about Tim was limited to her previous life. He was a big star, but after she had married Andrew, she hadn't paid much attention to his career. Hazel, don't worry. I'll do my best to take good care of her and help her succeed, Tim replied. Before Hazel could say anything, Vera looked at him in adoration. Do you mean that? She asked. Don't become too attached to him. He used to be your sponsor only. Don't be fooled by his good looks. He's a playboy, and you'll get hurt. She warned. Tim looked mortified. He put his hand over his heart and sorrowfully looked at Hazel. Hazel, you've hurt my feelings. I'm doing this for you because I thought we were friends. Hazel laughed. He's a very good actor, she thought. Vera sat captivated by Tim while the three of them chatted for a while longer. Hazel smiled at her little cousin as she saw how starstruck she was. I just hope he doesn't take advantage of her, she thought. It was almost dinner time, and Tim invited them both to stay, but Hazel politely declined, as she had Theo waiting for her at home. Hazel knew he would be angry again if she stayed out too late, so they both said their goodbyes, and she took Vera home with her. Josh arrived at the villa just as Hazel and Vera did. Theo had prepared dinner and was sitting in the living room, waiting for them. Vera felt quite comfortable at Theo's villa after the time she had spent there taking care of Hazel. When Vera saw Theo, she greeted him enthusiastically. I hope I'm not being a bother joining you for dinner, she asked, smiling widely. Theo knew that Hazel had a good relationship with her grandfather and her cousin. He couldn't understand how Vera could be Edgar's daughter. She was sweet and kind, just the opposite of her father. She probably takes after someone else in the family. He thought. He didn't reply. He only nodded his head indifferently. As long as Hazel was happy, he didn't care if she brought Vera home for dinner. They all sat around the dining table, and Theo placed one of Hazel's favorite meals in front of her. I forgot to call home earlier to tell Dora what to make for dinner, but I see that you've cooked one of my favorites, Hazel said, smiling. She didn't notice Theo's reaction when she called his villa her home, because it was as far as she was concerned. She invited everyone to start eating. Theo had been grumpy because they had come back late. Dora had left for the evening, so he had to cook and serve dinner. But upon hearing Hazel call the villa her home, his grumpiness disappeared. As they enjoyed their meal, Hazel said, I'm working with someone to take over a company. We are about to register its new name. As long as that's what you want to do, Theo said, as he took another bite of food. Vera, on the other hand, looked at Hazel in astonishment. You want to take over a company? Do you have experience with that sort of thing? She asked. Vera knew that her cousin was smart, but the day-to-day -day running of a company was not to be taken lightly. She realized that an understanding of the business and its finances would be needed. Can she handle it on her own? She thought. Hazel laughed at Vera's concern. <laughs> Do you think I'm an idiot and can't start my own company? There's no need to worry because I have Theo to turn to for advice, should I need help, she stated. It appeared to Vera that Hazel was trying to persuade Theo, but Vera knew that he would look out for Hazel and advise her when needed. 
Vera knew that she couldn't rely on her family to support her career choice. She was unsure what their reaction would be once they found out she planned to become an actor. She also realized that she couldn't let her family find out that Hazel was helping her because she knew how they felt about Hazel. Her parents didn't like her cousin, so she had to keep it from them that Hazel was involved in any way. Oh, Theo, there's one more thing I want to tell you. The person I'm working with is Percy Scott, and he seems very capable. I plan to let him manage things. Do you have time to meet him and let me know what you think? Hazel asked. Hazel looked sideways at Theo. She wasn't sure if he would be willing to meet with Percy, but she wanted him to understand what kind of company it was. Theo didn't say anything. He just nodded. Josh, who had been sitting quietly at the table enjoying dinner, was startled by Theo's reaction. This isn't the same old Theo from before, who would be angry with Hazel for meeting with another man, he thought. It appears that Hazel's tamed him. Feeling the change in atmosphere, Theo shot Josh a cold glare, as he understood what Josh's amused smile meant. Josh took the hint and stood up. Mr. Maynard, I have a few things that I need to deal with. If there's anything you need, just let me know, Josh said, and he excused himself from the table. I doubt I'll need you, Theo replied curtly, dismissing Josh. Hazel looked up at Josh, and then at Theo. What has Josh done to deserve that? She asked. It's usually only me you talk to like that. Theo looked pointedly at Hazel's plate and said, You should keep eating. How I speak to Josh is my business. Hazel kept silent. After dinner, Hazel arranged a room for Vera because it was late. It would be the first time Vera had stayed away from home for a night, and Hazel didn't know what she had told her parents. She knew that Vera was never allowed to stay over for a night with a friend because her parents were very strict. Undoubtedly, they were just trying to protect her. Vera looked around the guest room as if it was a palace. This is so much nicer than my bedroom at home. It's no wonder Hazel doesn't want to go home, she thought. I've laid out some of my clothes for you to borrow, and I'll take you to class in the morning, Hazel told her. Vera smiled and hugged her. Thank you, Hazel, she said sweetly. Hazel returned the smile and realized that Vera was still glowing from the excitement of meeting Tim. Silly thing, there's no need to thank me. I'll always help you and take care of you. We're like sisters. Also... Don't let your parents find out about the meeting with Tim. They'd be furious, Hazel said as she hugged Vera back. Hazel knew that everyone had dreams, and that, at the end of the day, they only had themselves to rely on. She also remembered that in her previous life, her relationship with Vera wasn't as good as it was in her current life. Hazel knew that Vera's parents would not be pleased with her pursuit of a life in entertainment, they felt it was beneath them, and they didn't want to be connected with people in those circles. She did know that there was some support for her, though. If you can get Grandpa's support, he'll help you deal with your parents, Hazel suggested. Okay, you should get some rest. I'll see you in the morning. Vera felt excited because that was the first time in her life that she had stayed over at someone else's for the night. Her parents had always treated her like a child. She knew they were trying to protect her, but she felt that she was old enough, especially as she had Hazel to take care of her. She climbed into bed and quickly fell asleep. After Hazel came out of Vera's room, she saw Theo busying himself in the study. She went to the kitchen, took some chocolate out of the fridge, and then returned to the study. She put a few pieces down in front of him and said with a smile, Don't work so hard. Here. Have some chocolate. Then she saw the expression on his face, and she asked, What's wrong? Did something happen? Theo took the chocolate from her hand and replied, It's nothing to worry about. Some family matters need to be taken care of. Nothing major. 
He wasn't trying to hide anything from her, but he doubted she would understand his family's politics, even if he did give her the details. As soon as Hazel heard Theo mention that it was a family matter, she knew that it involved both Brett and Paul. In her previous life, she hadn't been familiar with all the goings-on within the families, but after she had married Andrew, he had shared the gossip with her. Hazel knew that Theo's father had eventually handed over the family reins to him, and that his uncles hadn't been happy about that at all. She knew that not only did Theo have to deal with his uncle Paul and uncle Brett, who was a vicious and merciless person, but he also had to deal with his brother, Axel. To maintain his position as head of the family, he had to placate them all and win them over, using any trick in the book. Hazel had heard that the uncles would go to any lengths to agitate Theo. Fortunately, Theo was a man who handled conflict and complex family matters very well, and he had already brought some stability back to the family. Once Theo had unearthed the traitor in the company, the board had more faith in him than his uncles. Brett and Paul's power and influence had been greatly reduced. That hadn't been the end of things, though. She knew they would eventually leave to join forces with another company and plot against Theo. It appeared that no one knew the specifics, but Hazel wasn't interested in their family's matters and had only heard rumors. In her previous life, she had died shortly thereafter and was unaware of what had happened. I guess you're playing a game of cat and mouse, Hazel said to Theo. Theo looked up at her and seemed to understand what she meant. He took her into his arms and said, Tell me what you think is going on. This is something within your family. I should... She started to speak, but hesitated because she knew it could get her into trouble. Just say it, Theo encouraged. He didn't mind that she had an opinion about his family. She had been with him long enough for him to feel that she was part of it. Hazel smiled and caressed his cheek. Your family is divided into four factions. You and your brother are each a faction, but you are also both your father's sons, so you also side together against your uncles. She explained. As for your uncle Paul, he always sits on the fence, so you could try and win him over by maybe giving him some control. She continued. Your uncle Brett is jealous of you, so you'll have to work on him carefully. Although Paul was ambitious, he didn't have much authority and was the sloppiest of the brothers. The fact that he wasn't as ruthless as Brett made him easier to control, along with the way he always followed whoever seemed to have control. Theo only needed to dangle a carrot to convince Paul to support him. But if Brett was able to convince Paul to join him, Theo's position would be threatened. Hazel also knew that Theo's brother, Axel, wasn't easy to deal with. But they both supported their father. Theo made a face and squinted at Hazel. He realized that she had a good grasp of his situation and had analyzed it correctly. He had been considering what to do and kept hearing his grandfather in his head telling him they should all work together. Sadly, his uncles didn't seem to understand that they could destroy the family and their company by siding against him. Watching Theo stare at her, Hazel gently held the side of his face. You need to find a way to bring the family together. If the family was in your hands, what would happen in the future? If the family's future was placed in your uncle's hands, what would it look like? The Maynard family goes back for generations, and it can't be allowed to fall into decline. Whatever happens is up to you, she told him. Hazel hoped that she had helped him make the right decision. She could see everything that was happening to the Maynard family, but she didn't have much control over it. As for the relationship between her and Theo, she was unsure she had control of that either. The corner of Theo's mouth curved up in a smile. I might just have a whole new level of respect for this woman, he thought.